Let's talk about Republican Congressman Glenn Thompson. So he represents Pennsylvania's 15th congressional district, and he was one of the 157 Republicans who voted against marriage equality last week. Now, it's interesting that he voted that way, considering three days later, as NBC News reports, he attended his gay son's wedding. So you vote against marriage equality, but then you celebrate your own gay son's same-sex wedding. Make it make sense to me. This doesn't make sense. I mean, it makes sense, but it's just, it's weird. And there's so many questions. I have a lot to say with regard to this story, but why would you vote that way if you know that your son relies on the right to same-sex marriages? Why would your son still invite you to this wedding knowing what you just did? I just, there's, there's a lot to talk about, and believe it or not, the plot thickens even further, but let's get to the article. So as NBC News reports, the gay son of Representative Glenn Thompson of Pennsylvania confirmed to NBC News on Monday that he married the love of his life on Friday and that his father was there. NBC News is not publishing the names of the grooms, neither of whom is a public figure. Thompson's press secretary, Madison Stone, also confirmed the congressman was in attendance. Quote, congressman and Mrs. Thompson were thrilled to attend and celebrate their son's marriage on Friday night as he began this new chapter in his life, Stone said in an email, adding that the Thompsons are very happy to welcome their new son-in-law into their family. In an email last week to the local newspaper Center Daily, Stone called the Respect for Marriage Act nothing more than an election year messaging stunt for Democrats in Congress who have failed to address historic inflation and out-of-control prices at gas pumps and grocery stores. So, okay, the most puzzling aspect about this story is how they can just vote against this and then go on to pretend as if everything is copacetic. Yeah, of course, we attended our gay son's wedding and we were thrilled to welcome our new son-in-law into the family. Hang on, you, you, can't, you, can't just, you can't just say that. The series of events preceding that wedding make this picture very difficult to believe. So obviously what's happening is that publicly, he has to pander to the far-right base of the Republican Party, but privately, he knows that marriage equality is a no-brainer. Of course, it should, it should be something that everyone supports, but just he can't say that publicly. Even if you have a gay son, you, you don't have the courage to come out and support marriage equality at a time when the Supreme Court is threatening to take that away. Clarence Thomas specifically cited Obergfell as a case that the court should revisit. So even if you want your son to be married, you're thankful and thrilled to welcome your new son-in-law into the family, you're okay with the Supreme Court taking that away? This is insane. Now look, even if you're a Republican and you've got to pander to these extremists in your party, you actually don't have to be a terrible person. And we know this because other Republicans with gay family members have not done the same thing. For example, Republican Senator Rob Portman, who has a gay son, is co-sponsoring the Senate version of the bill. And he released a press statement back in 2013 announcing his support for same-sex marriage, citing his son as the reason why he had a change of heart. So believe it or not, you don't have to be terrible on this issue just because you're a Republican. I mean, Rob Portman demonstrates that, but yet Glenn Thompson is too much of a coward and instead is choosing to throw his own son under the bus to pander to the GOP's far-right evangelical base. And I'm sorry, but the son has to step in and he should have said, you know what, dad, you just voted against my marriage. You don't get to come and celebrate my wedding now. Bye. You can listen to all of us celebrate on the outside, sit by the curb, but you're no longer welcome because you voted against what I'm doing right now. This is a fundamental right. And you told me, your son, to go fuck myself. So you don't get to participate. I mean, I disown my family members if they simply vote for Republicans. You don't have to support Democrats. I hate Democrats too. But if you affirmatively vote for a party that wants to take away my rights and recriminalize gay intimacy and enact all of these laws that fuck over my life, you don't get to celebrate my life with me. You get kicked to the curb because that's what you did to me. And this son needs to put his foot down. I know it's difficult. I know it's, it's a really you know, complex and awkward conversation to have, but you've got to draw the line. You can't allow this to happen. He just voted against your marriage. Why would you let him into your wedding? It's just, it's unbelievable to me, like what people subject themselves to. Again, it's your father, so it's it's difficult to just disown him. That's no easy thing, but you cannot allow this to happen. I don't care if he's a Republican and this is his career to pander to evangelicals. If you're gay, 
You're in a position to influence a lawmaker. So do it. Don't invite him to your fucking weddings. You shouldn't allow him to be part of your life. Now, it's not just that he voted against marriage equality. The human rights campaign gave him a 0% score on LGBTQ plus issues, meaning that he does not ever vote affirmatively for LGBTQ plus rights. And also there's a number of bills that he could support that would improve his son's life, but he's choosing not to. So he also hasn't co-sponsored the Do Not Harm Act, which prohibits the Religious Freedom Restoration Act from letting people use so-called religious liberty as a legal justification to discriminate against queer people. Doesn't support that. He also hasn't supported the Safe Schools Improvement Act, which requires schools to adopt codes that mitigate bullying on the basis of race, but also sexual orientation and gender identity. He's also against the PrEP Access and Coverage Act, which would require all public and private insurance providers to cover HIV prevention pills. He has not co-sponsored the Therapeutic Fraud Prevention Act, which amends the Federal Trade Commission Act to clarify that conversion therapy is an unfair or deceptive practice, and he also hasn't supported the Every Child Deserves a Family Act, which prohibits discrimination against same-sex couples when it comes to adoption. Now, that last policy that he's not supporting could directly impact his own family. I mean, do you not want grandchildren? What if your son wants to adopt children with his husband? So you're not supporting this legislation that would enable him to do that in the event the GOP takes away that right. I mean, these are things that directly impact his own family, but he's choosing to not support them because reasons. It's just, it's ridiculous. Now, we actually have a snippet of the speech that he gave. And if you didn't know the details surrounding this story, you would just assume this is an ordinary loving parent. Let's listen. Um, and so uh, we're just uh, really thankful that you're here. Actually, it goes beyond that as, as, uh, as parents. We, we love it when they find their one true love. Especially when they become a part of our families, then, right? <laughs> That's what we're rooting for. We've been fortunate uh, with uh, three sons, and uh, and uh, done a great job of adding to the family. <laughs> <laughs> Now, there's more to that audio, but the reason why I played that specific portion is because he's speaking directly to his new son-in-law and how happy he is that he has this individual that his son brought into the family. Now, for more details on that particular speech, uh, BuzzFeed breaks it down and they transcribe the most interesting moments. So they write, as candles flickered on the long wooden dining tables under a ceiling decorated with large string lights, guests sat with glasses of sparkling wine before them to hear speeches to toast to the two newlyweds. Wearing a black tuxedo and black bow tie, Pennsylvania Republican Representative Glenn Thompson toasted his son and new son-in-law, both of whom sat before him wearing wedding white blazers. Standing next to his wife, the member of Congress told the guests how blessed he felt to celebrate the men's marriage and to welcome a new member into his family. Thompson said any parent hopes and prays that their child stays healthy, finds their way, and ultimately finds that one true love so they can have the opportunity to experience that, someone to grow old with. What we love it when they find their one true love, especially when they become part of our families then. That's what we're rooting for, Thompson said, praising his son for his selection of a husband. But yet three days prior, he voted against these types of marriages. It's so gross, not just because it directly affects your family, but this affects hundreds of thousands of same-sex couples. And he's just, he's, he's there, he's welcomed there after doing something egregious. I mean, it's just, it's absurd to me that this was allowed. Uh, but one of the guests there was not having it. BuzzFeed continues, I think the word should definitely get out there. The guest said of their decision for BuzzFeed News to publish it. These politicians need to be exposed for who they really are. It's baffling to me that Republicans are so hypocritical, where they say one thing publicly, but then in private, they live a completely different life. It's absurd. These people are frauds. And really what's happening is a, lar a large portion of the Republican Party, not all of them, but a large portion of them, they know that the GOP base is batshit fucking insane. They know this. We're all thinking it. They know it. They think that too. But they're just too afraid to stand up to the evangelicals in their base, even if they disagree with them, because, I mean, this is the most loyal voting demographic for the Republican Party. So if you piss off evangelicals, you could end your political career like that. 
So it takes courage to do the right thing, as Senator Rob Portman has done, where he doesn't just affirm, uh, affirmatively support marriage equality, but he is co-sponsoring the legislation because he actually loves his son. He actually has courage, even if I disagree with him on like 99% of the issues, he at least is a decent enough human being to not throw his own family under the bus. But here, individuals like Glenn Thompson, they vote against their own son's wedding and then attend it three days later as if there's, there's nothing wrong with that. No, there is something wrong with that. There's a problem with that. You're hypocritical, you're gross, and your son should want nothing to do with you after you just voted against his right to marry. That's despicable. Beta male, not a beta male.